Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 19th of January. India says keeping close watch after reports of Chinese incursion. Pakistan approves China's Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. And rival faction threatens to expel PM Oli from Nepal Communist Party. And now for all the details. In response to reports of China building a village in India's northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh, Indian government said that it is keeping a constant watch on all developments having a bearing on India's security. News reports surfaced on Monday that China has allegedly built a village in Upper Subansari district of Arunachal Pradesh. This comes as India and China continue to remain locked in a months-long bitter border standoff in eastern Ladakh. India's Foreign Ministry on Monday acknowledged reports of fresh Chinese construction activity along the line of actual control in northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh and said that India is constantly monitoring all developments that could have a bearing on its security. The comments came in the wake of reports based on photographs put out by US-based imaging company Planet Labs, which claimed a village with 101 houses had come up along the river Sari Chu in Upper Subansari district in Arunachal Pradesh, where there was no construction in August 2019. The foreign ministry said that government is keeping a constant watch on all such developments and would take necessary measures to safeguard the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. India's opposition Congress has demanded explanation from the government over the report. On Tuesday, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi attacked Prime Minister Narendra Modi over the issue. Meanwhile, ruling Bharatiya Janata Party lawmaker from Arunachal Pradesh, Tapir Gao, blamed Congress and its policies for the Chinese construction on and inside the McMohan line. Since 80s to till today, they are occupying this area and constructions of villages is not a new thing. And they have already constructed, constructed a military base in between Bisa and Maja, which is very much inside a Megbone line under Indian territory. India and China have been locked in an armed standoff in eastern Ladakh since May last year, as multiple rounds of military and diplomatic talks have not produced any breakthrough yet. The North India is still under the grip of an intense cold wave, with dense fog enveloping several areas. National capital New Delhi was among the other regions that remained engulfed in a layer of fog, with almost zero visibility on Tuesday morning. Parts of North India are witnessing chilling cold with dense fog enveloping several areas. National capital New Delhi was among areas that were blanketed by very dense smog on Tuesday morning, dropping visibility to zero meters in some areas. Pollution levels were also at hazardous in Delhi on Tuesday. Similar scenes were seen in northern Amritsar and Gorakhpur cities where visibility reduced an intense cold wave made it difficult for drivers to move. Temperatures in northern parts of Indian subcontinent skirting the Himalayan foothills dipped drastically during the months of December and January, mostly due to seasonal western disturbances. <laughs> Snowfall in India's Jammu and Kashmir has a direct impact on temperatures in lower northern states of New Delhi, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan has approved the Chinese Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use amid rising cases of COVID-19 in the country. Days after AstraZeneca's vaccine developed with Oxford University received a similar authorization. The Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan or DRAP has approved a vaccine by China's Sinopharm for emergency use amid rising cases of COVID-19 in the country. DRAP in an official statement late Monday read that Sinopharm, one of the two vaccines approved by the authority, has been given emergency use authorization after evaluating its safety and quality. The authority said the authorization will be reviewed every quarter, keeping in view further data regarding safety, efficacy and quality. The South Asian country of 220 million has had 523,011 coronavirus infections and 11,055 deaths as of Tuesday. Meanwhile, some schools in Pakistan began reopening on Monday after being closed for nearly two months. Classes 9 to 12 resumed on Monday, with primary schools set to reopen on January 25 and universities and colleges on February 1, according to Federal Education Minister. स्कूल में जब आ, आते हैं बच्चे तो हम उनका ख्याल रखते हैं लेकिन अगर कोई ऐसी लहर आ जाती है तो उस सूरत में तो वाकई में अगर कोई बहुत ज्यादा डेंजर सिचुएशन है तो स्कूल्स बंद होंगे द गवर्नमेंट क्लोज्ड ऑल स्कूल्स ऑन नवंबर 26 लास्ट ईयर आफ्टर द कंट्री वाज हिट बाय द सेकंड वेव ऑफ द कोरोना वायरस दे वर आल्सो क्लोज्ड बिटवीन मार्च एंड सितंबर ऑफ लास्ट ईयर मूविंग ऑन Locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concern over continued neglect by Islamabad and the Stooge government led by Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz party. They have blamed the authorities have been indifferent towards the illegally occupied region's development and have put them on pity of circumstances over the years. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over neglect by Islamabad over the years and the indifference towards the development of the illegally occupied region. They have blamed Prime Minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir, Raza Farooq Haider Khan, a leader of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, has not fulfilled any promise that he committed on the eve of election over four years ago and continues to remain missing from his constituency. They said that now elections are soon going to be held in the illegally occupied region Politicians will be again making false claims of development. However, in reality, nothing has been done on ground. Pakistan People's Party के दौर में फिर mega project हुए थे, medical colleges और दीगर बड़े-बड़े projects हुए थे। इस government में कोई mega projects नहीं हुए। इन्होंने स्वाय अपने लोगों को नवाजने के लिए, उन्हें ग्रोव में बांट कर, वक्ती तौर पे तासबात को हवा देकर, अपनी एक डाकाम उकमत कर साबत हुई है नॉनली की उकमत आजाद कश्मीर में। While Pakistan claims to champion the Kashmiri cause on the World Forum. Pakistan administered Kashmir remains one of the most neglected and backward regions under its rule. In news from Afghanistan, at a time when Afghan negotiators in Doha are holding talks with the Taliban, the demand to discuss legitimacy of the war in Afghanistan has been raised. One of the negotiators representing the Afghan government in Doha has said the peace talks will not have an outcome until the issue of legitimacy is clarified. Afghan peace negotiator in Doha, Abdul Hafiz Mansoor, has said the negotiating team has decided that the legitimacy of the war in Afghanistan must be discussed with the Taliban before any progress can be made. The remark comes as the chief negotiators from the Afghan government side and the Taliban met in Doha over the past weekend. However, the working groups from both sides failed to meet on Monday to finalize the agenda for the talks. According to negotiator Nader Nadri, it was only the heads of the two teams and a limited amount of members who met on Sunday evening and discussed the agenda. The lack of meetings was criticized by Abdullah Abdullah head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, who met with a number of foreign diplomats at a virtual event to discuss coordination around the peace efforts earlier this week. Meanwhile, an increase in violence has once again raised concerns among Afghanistan's allies. 
who have consistently called for an immediate halt to conflict in the country. In news from Bangladesh, a second major fire blazed through the Rohingya refugee camps in southern Bangladesh on Monday, coming within a week of another destructive fire which destroyed shelters belonging to thousands of refugees. A major fire blazed through the Rohingya refugee camp in southern Bangladesh on Monday, coming within a week of another destructive fire which destroyed homes belonging to thousands of people. In a video shared by an eyewitness, a fire was seen burning a school building in B block of Cox's Bazar, Rohingya camp, in the early hours of Monday. Local residents were also seen shifting through the charred rubble after daybreak. On January 14, a huge fire in Nayapara camp destroyed more than 550 homes, 150 shops and a facility belonging to a non-profit organization, according to the UN Refugee Agency. This comes as Bangladesh has started moving groups of Rohingya refugees to a low-lying island in the Bay of Bengal, citing overcrowding in shelter homes. More than a million Rohingya live in the mainland camps in southern Bangladesh, the vast majority having fled Myanmar in 2017 from a military-led crackdown that UN investigators said was executed with genocidal intent. Myanmar denies genocide and says its forces were targeting Rohingya militants who attacked police posts. Moving on to news from Nepal. The faction of Nepal Communist Party led by Pushpa Kamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal has sought an explanation from Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and threatened to expel him from the party over his move to dissolve the parliament. The ruling party has broken into two factions following the crisis and has been fighting for legitimacy. The faction of Nepal Communist Party or NCP led by Pushpa Kamal Dehel and Madhav Kumar Nepal on Monday sought an explanation from Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli within the next three days for defying the constitution by dissolving the parliament and why he should not be expelled from the party. NCP spokesperson Narayan Kaji Shreshtha said the party would terminate Oli's general membership if he failed to satisfactorily respond to its letter. The Nepal Communist Party, following Oli's move to dissolve the parliament on December 20, has broken into two factions, fighting for legitimacy and election sign. The faction led by Dehel had earlier removed the PM from the post of party co-chair and replaced him with Madhav Kumar Nepal. Oli, however, claims that his faction is authentic and the rival faction has no power to take any action against him. The Election Commission has been looking into the matter. The December 20 decision by the Prime Minister has triggered street protests across the country, with his colleagues and opposition political parties blaming him for derailing a stable government amid the pandemic. A team of climbers from Nepal this past weekend became the first mountaineers to successfully complete a winter attempt on the summit of the K2, the world's second tallest peak. Located on the Pakistan-China border, K2 is the only mountain over 8,000 meters that had not been summited in the winter. Their success was, however, marred by the death on the mountain of renowned Spanish climber Sergio Mingote, who fell down a crevasse as he attempted to make his way down to base camp. Around 49 climbers in several teams are on K2 making attempts on the summit, weather permitting. The coronavirus pandemic had meant restrictions on travel severely impacting the traditional summer mountaineering season in the Karakoram range and Pakistan in particular. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.